All right, hello and welcome to a new set of slides. So these are going to be pretty chill this week. We're going to get through these about Boolean algebra, which surprisingly you already know how to do. Okay, this is essentially logic part two. You already have learned this stuff. It's going to just be presented to you in a slightly different way, that's all. And so there's a different textbook chapter on it, and then there's some a few new things, but not a ton of new things. Okay, so let's talk about it. So Boolean algebra. It's a set of rules and operations for working with variables whose values are either zero or one. Hmm, zero or one, that's two things. That's a, a binary number, a binary digit, a bit. We have discovered that zero is very similar to, I was about to write true, to false, and one is very similar to true. And we've we've come up with operations on false and true. Hmm, maybe we can do those same operations on zero and one. That's the idea. So yeah. Wow, I totally wrote it here too. Zero is false, one is true. How funny. Multiplication is just a dot. We don't use the cross because we're cool like that. That's and. Addition is or. And complement, that's the one new thing. It doesn't look like the negation sign at all. It's uh, it's you put a bar over the thing. Okay, that's called complement, that's negation. All right, so for example, if I say one times zero, that's equivalent to, well, it's equal to, first of all, it's equal to zero because it's equivalent to true and false, which we know is equal to uh, false. Okay, hopefully you see where I'm going with that. And so for example, also like uh, one plus zero is equal to one, which is weird to think about. One plus one is also equal to one because the plus is equivalent to or. You see that? Very weird, very weird. And then we have the, your complement, like zero complement, that's equal to one. That's the idea. So we're just using zero and one instead of true and false. It all looks slightly different, but it's all the same. Okay, so uh, that's the idea. And then we have weird terms so that we can define cooler things later. We say a literal, a Boolean literal, uh, it's a variable. It's just a variable in this Boolean algebra, or it's the complement of that variable. So x is a literal, y is a literal, x bar is a literal as well as y bar. So this is what a literal looks like, okay? And then we call a min term, all one word for no good reason, a product of literals. So a product of uh, either variables or their complemented or their complements as much as you would like. You can have three, you can have one, you can have two, doesn't really matter. And it's just a bunch of things, a bunch of literals in between multiplications, which are ands, okay? Secretly and. So like x and y and z bar and x bar, which is going to be, it's going to make it false, but who cares? And z, okay? That's the idea. This is just one big min term, okay? And that is Boolean algebra in a nutshell. It was very difficult, wasn't it? So, uh, comic relief again, enjoy, and let's talk about gates and circuits now, because that's the new thing. That's the new cool thing for this, uh, for this section, because now, because we're working on ones and zeros, those are close to like high and low voltages, we can now write circuits, okay? And maybe if you're uh, on the electrical engineering path or the computer engineering path, you've been uh, exposed to these things already, but we're going to talk about all these different kinds of ways that you could make circuits now, which is very fun. So yeah, Boolean algebra, or these logical operations, we can translate that into physical hardware. With enough transistors, we can do whatever we want. So a logic gate, I don't like how that's on separate lines, a logic gate performs a particular Boolean operation on an input. So there is a gate, we have a box that we can send like one and zero to, and if this is the or box, it'll give us back one, yeah? That's the idea of a circuit, that's all it is. And there are some fun little circuit simulators that you might want to look at, uh, but we're gonna learn about the different kinds of circuits on the next slide. So maybe we can go here, why not? Let's try. Uh, boop, boop, boop. 
How fun. So here, here's an AND gate, and hopefully I can zoom in. View, maybe? Yeah, there we go, there we go. I don't know how to move, though. There we go. Yeah, so that's an AND gate. And you can take things. You can take uh, a 1 and a 0, and you can put them together. We'll eventually get there. I want to use the mouse to move them around. We can, c we can connect them like that, and see the output as, I guess, a 1 or a 0, which can be uh, a light bulb. Isn't that fun? So the light bulb is off because it's an AND, so that's unfortunate. Maybe if we put, instead, a 1 and a 1, the light bulb is now on. Isn't that fun? And maybe, okay, yeah, I already got it right. So we'll come back to this. This is fun. Uh, we'll come back to this. I encourage you to play around. So let's learn about the different kinds of circuits. I just showed you this one. Uh, it does the AND, but let's, let's just talk about them all. OK, so the following are gates, including Bill. Now, these are the most common ones you're going to see. There are more than this. There's more than these three. But as we know, AND, OR, and NOT are functionally complete. They can build whatever we would like. Um, we'll get to fancier ones later, though. OK, so this is an AND gate. It takes two wires, two inputs coming in, and gives back their multiplication. So I guess we don't actually need the dot. We can just put the, dot, put the things right next to each other. So this is going to give back x, y, which is equivalent to, remember, x and y. This is an AND gate, OK? And you can remember, it looks like that uh, that little bullet thing from from Super Mario. That's an AND gate. And now an OR gate is a bit curvier. That's how you can remember what it looks like. It's like a, like a stingray or something. And it performs OR on its two wires that are coming into it. It's a binary operation. It needs those two wires. And it gives back the OR of those two things. So X OR Y. OK? And then we have an inverter, which produces the complement, or we can call it the not gate if we want. Uh, so that it does not x. That's what it gives back when you give it x. OK? So it's like a little triangle with the circle at the end. The circle is what does the negation. That's how I want you to think about it, at least. OK, so those are our gates. And we can represent a bunch of different things with them. OK, so let me show you one. OK, so uh, maybe I want you to try this, actually. It's it's fun. Let's let me have you try it for a second and then we'll come back and do it. OK, so if X is one, Y is zero and Z is one, what is this gates output? Like what's going right here? That would be fun for you to think about, I think. Uh, try it. See if you understand how these things can be combined. OK, and then we'll talk about what is the formula that this circuit is computing. OK, we can do those both at the same time, actually. So give that a shot. Uh, that would be fun, I think. And let's try it. Uh, actually, just for fun, let's do this in the simulator. Because we're cool like that. All right, so we're going to make this. So remember that this is an OR gate. These are inverters or not gates. This is an AND gate. This is another AND gate. And the output's way over here. All right, and it's got three things, x, y, and z, which can either be 1 or 0. Like it could be all 1s. But for us, we're doing 1, 0, 1. Yeah? Back we go. Delete, delete. Uh, zoom out, if, I, if only I could. Oh, I, I know how. There we go. So our light bulb is nice and it's going to tell us when we get a one or a zero back it's lit up when it's a one and it's not lit when it's a zero and okay we have x y and z which are one zero and one we can make a toggle switch i think no that doesn't show the right way we'll do a one a zero and a one because why not okay so those are x y and z and now we'll have an or gate that combines x and y here we go, here we go. OR gate, combining x and y. Yes, yes, yes. Then 
we're going to have down here some not gates, one on x. You see how this is going to x? This is like it's jumping over the wire. One on x, and uh, it's going into this way, and the other's on z. So we're going to get a not gate. Uh, we're going to need two of those, two inverters, two not gates. Try and make this look the same. It's got to go right, right about there. Another not gate, please. And so one's coming from x, bam. And the other is coming from Z. OK. And then we're going to and together re the result of those things. OK. We can do that. Take the result. And it in here with our and gate. And then finally, we're going to take the result of this or and the result of this and bring them together in one final and gate. Bam. There we go. And. So that's going to go there. That's going to go there. Now place your bets. Do you think that the light bulb, which is our output, is going to light up or not? OK, drum roll, please. It's not lighting up. OK, that means the output was 0. Dun, dun, dun. The output must have been 0. And let's, let's talk about why. And that will involve computing the actual formula as well. So here's x and y coming in. The output is going to be x or y. Well, we're going to say x plus y because this is the chapter on Boolean algebra. And OK, after these knots, we transform x. Like x was coming along this wire here. Now the x has been transformed into x bar. The z has been transformed into z bar. And then anding together x bar and z bar, we get x bar times z bar. OK? That's the idea. And then we're going to add together both of these. And so the output's going to look like uh, x plus y and, uh, or times, x bar times z bar. OK, so that's the idea. And that is essentially the idea. Uh, that's essentially why the output is what it is. It's 1, so it's 1 plus 0 times not x, which is uh, 1, so not 1, and, oops, sorry about that, and z bar, which is 1, so not 1 again. So those 1's never had a chance. Too bad. Uh, and so this is, of course, going to be false. Some not 1's or 0's. So that's 1 times, and this thing altogether is 0 times 0, which is 0. And yeah, that's, that's essentially the answer. So we, uh, we came up with 0, and we also found the formula, the Boolean formula, which was x plus y times uh, x bar times z bar. Because and is, associ and is associative, I don't need this ex extra little parenthesis statement. OK, so that's the answer. And remember that this is equivalent to x or y and not x, and not uh, z. OK, so however you want to think about it, it's all the same. And that is my example. OK, so now one that I intended for you to try yourself. So uh, I want you to draw the circuit diagram for this Boolean expression right here. OK, so give that a try. And then go and evaluate it when x and y are 1, and w and z are both 0. OK, so give that a try. And we'll go from there. OK, so when we're drawing the circuit diagram, maybe you want to convert this to logic. We're going to try our best not to. You need to look for the outermost thing. OK, that's going to be your last thing. And then you'll also look at the innermost things, because those will be the first things that you do. Innermost things here, outermost thing way over here. The very last thing that you're going to do is this OR right here. OK, so there's going to eventually be an OR way, way down over here. And that's going to give us our final output. OK? And then to get there, we have to get x and not y. So we have to make those happen. We need wires for x, y, z, and w, of course. And then we first need to negate y. I hope you see that. So that we can then end it with the x. So let's negate y with a little not gate, with an inverter. 
and then we'll take x and and it with that not y. And you can draw these wires however you want. We'll and them. Whee, that's a better and. We'll and them together, and so now that's x, y bar. Okay, that's our x, y bar right there, and it helps to write it like this so that you see what's going on. And then we have z and w plus z bar. So it's this whole thing barred. Okay, so it's negate. It's do w plus z first, then negate the whole thing. You see that? So the first thing that we do is w plus z, which is or. w or z. Oops. Let's do that. Here's w or z. Doesn't matter the order because they're commutative operations, right? Okay, that's w or z. And then we need to negate the whole darn thing. So that's w or z. And then we need to negate it to get w or z bar. Yes? I hope you see how that's working. And then we need to multiply by z with an and. Yeah? So this is going to be anded together with we with a z. And so let's take a z. Let's make a little thing, have it jump the wire, because why not? Come up here, z. And now we've anded it with z. So this out on this wire will be this very long thing, z and uh, w or z negated. Yes? So now, the final thing is or them together. We have this, we have this, or them together, please. And here we go. In they go. And that was a bad line, so let's try and fix that. There we go. And then in this goes. Okay. So then finally, we have our output. Whatever it, whatever it may be, we know it's going to be this particular equation. x, y bar plus z times w plus z bar. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too bad. Uh, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes and you got the same thing. So let's try to evaluate it now when x and y are 1 and w and z are 0. Okay, so uh, if x and y are 1, that's... Okay, eventually, let's just write it out. We're doing 1 times 1 bar plus 0 times uh, w plus z bar is 0 plus 0 bar. Yeah? So, uh, that's equal to false, right? Uh, 1 and 0 is false, so that's 0, plus 0 and anything is already 0, but uh, let's, let's humor ourselves. 0 and uh, 0 plus 0 is 0, but barred it is 1, 0 times 1, well, it's still all 0. Okay, so it's kind of like math. You see how 0 goes into it and gets rid of everything. But uh, 1 plus 1, remember, that's, that's 1 in Boolean logic. It's weird. Okay, so the answer is 0, and this is our circuit diagram. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Uh, okay. So here's more, more jokes, to be or not to be. All right, so now we're ready to actually use that definition that we made of these silly uh, things, literals. Dun, 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 are you ready? So uh, there are two ways, two standard ways of writing Boolean formulas. It's not just, okay, x times y plus z times w plus p, all that, times q, and then, you know, let's bar it too. No, 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 we have more elegant ways of writing things, okay? We don't like this, this is too complicated. For our, our small human minds. And so we have what's known as disjunctive normal, disjunctive normal form, sorry, and conjunctive normal form, okay? So, uh, let us let us talk about this. So, con, that Latin root, right? It means with. It comes from with. Bring together these two things, and I want you to read con as and, okay? And then dis is like, take two disparate things and join them together. That I want you to read as or, okay? Or plus. So, 
disjunctive normal form is a sum of products of literals. Are you ready? So what is a literal but a Boolean variable or its complement? So that's what DNF means. You have a formula in DNF when it's a sum of products of literals. The outermost operation is the sum. It's the disjunction. Okay, that's the fancy word for or in logic. It's called disjunction. Okay, so here's an example of a DNF formula. Uh, let's see here. It's just a bunch of uh, ands of things, ands of literals, or together, if that makes any sense. So an example is going to make it a lot clearer. So let's do it. Uh, let's do it in normal logic first. So it's a bunch of ands, x and not y and uh, z, ORD with I don't know. ORD with w. ORD with uh, p and not q, on and on and on forever. But the idea is these ORs, those are the outermost thing. Maybe I'll draw them in a different color. Boop, boop. So those are the outermost thing. They separate uh, the inner parts, which are ands of literals. OK? It's an OR of ands, if that makes any sense at all. OK, opposite to that is conjunctive normal form, CNF. It's a product of sums of literals. Oh, and maybe let's go and translate this to uh, Boolean algebra. x and y bar and. Uh, or times z plus w plus p and q bar. Okay, and then CNF is essentially the exact opposite. Here's an example of CNF. X or not y or z and w and p or not q. Okay, and then you can have as many as you like. P, p, uh, P or Q and X or not Y and Z or W, whatever you'd like. It's just a bunch of ands of ORD together things. Okay, they could be negated potentially. And so uh, let us draw that in a different color now. The ands are the outermost thing. That's what brings everybody together. Conjunctive normal form. OK, and so this would again be equivalent to P plus Q in parentheses, and then multiply it with X plus Y bar multiplied with Z plus W. OK, so uh, that is that is the idea. It's a product of sums. And so the outermost operation is a conjunction or and. That's just the fancy word for and. So that's that. Now it's your turn. So. Uh, Let's draw a circuit again. So let's try try drawing a circuit now that computes the function described by the following input output table. Oops. We have no clue what it is, but you're actually going to end up writing either CNF or DNF if you do my little trick. Yeah? So draw a circuit for this and let's come back and see what you got. So if you remember my trick from way before, it was like, all right, find all of the lines, the rows where it was true, and then we can just add them together. It's like, OK, uh, the output is true. F is uh, true when it's uh, when x is false, and y is also false. It's weird that they write the, the things this way for Boolean algebra. They kind of do it backwards. Uh, and then we also, either it's that or it's true when uh, x is true and y is false. x and not y. Oh man, this is disjunctive normal form. Hey, so that's equivalent to x bar and y bar plus x and y. OK, and that will make this function what we need. And so at this point, all you have to do is write your circuit. So you got an x coming in, you got a y coming in. We're going to negate both of them eventually. So we might as well just uh, deal with that now. Let's, uh, do we want to have just two? I think it'll be cleaner if I negate a different, uh, like the y 
with two different negations, okay? But you don't need it. You can just steal from the same wire if you really wanted to. So let's get, uh, well, we're going to need x, not x, eventually. And we're going to need not y at least once. So let's do that. So here's x, here's y, and so we have not x and not y. Well, these ones need to be anded together, that's for sure. So let's let's just go and do that. This is probably going to get ugly, sorry. So now we have x bar and y bar. Yeah, this is x bar and y bar. And now we need to or it with, way over here, let's or it together with x and not y. So here, let's take an x. So we need the x. We jump the wire. Come over here, please. We'll take the x, and then we'll also take uh, another not y. So you can steal from this wire if you wanted to, and honestly, that might make it simpler. But uh, you can also just make a new not y. Okay. Either way is fine. And so this is x and uh, not y. And that together needs to be ORed. Okay. So the very last thing we do is one one giant OR that takes them both and gives back. Uh, so this was x and y bar. This will give back what we wanted. It'll OR them together. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense to you, and it's all it's all working out. And this will only ever be true when uh, they're both false or uh, x is true and y is false. All right. So uh, we're moving right along. Very very nice. Uh, oh man, this is fun because I get to show you this table and let's make it slightly prettier. And remember that it's all the same. Okay, it's just symbols look different now. You won't believe how hard it is to make a double bar in PowerPoint. So all of these laws, they're exactly the same for logic. If you want to prove something, if you want to simplify something, go back to these laws and they're all the same, okay? True negated, it's false, yeah, of course it is. De Morgan's laws look look pretty, they look a bit different. You do x or y negate the whole thing, and that's not x and not y, okay? x and y negated is not x or not y. You see that? So uh, it's just a different way of writing the same thing, which is fun. Uh, and a lot of these look like math, don't they? Uh, let's see, what can we do, what can we do? Is there total rules for addition and multiplication? Uh, what else? This looks really weird, but uh, that is the idea. Actually, I think I forgot a parenthesis here. Sorry about that. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense, or does it? X plus Y. No, no, I think I did it wrong. Yeah, X plus Y, and then Y's times Z. You know, I'm going to look this up just to make sure I wasn't doing it wrong. Yes, that one's fine. It trips me up because it looks weird, but you can do this in Boolean algebra, but you can't do it in math. This one looks a whole lot simpler. That, that one makes sense. Let's make sure I'm actually recording. Yes. So, sorry about that. This one totally is fine. Uh, that's normal multiplication distribution rules. But you can also distribute a plus, which is odd, isn't it? Uh, over an and. Very weird, very weird, I know. Uh, double negation, all these things you know and love, okay? So come back to this, or just go to the logic slides and use that one. They're all the same. Okay, so now I want you to try this. Use the laws of Boolean algebra, these ones, give their names and everything, to show that this is equivalent to that. x plus x bar y, all of that to the bar, all of that negated. Make sure that that is equal to, it should be, equal to x bar times y bar. Are you ready? So give that a try, and then we'll do it together. Okay, uh, let's see here. Dun dun dun. So I guess we might as well start from this one. That's the more complicated one, of course. And we have a negation of an or. So I think De Morgan's is the right way, right way to go, the right place to stop, uh, to start. X plus X bar Y, all of that bar. So that's what we started with. And then let's use De Morgan's to uh, make it cleaner. All right. So that's going to be X bar times, you see that, x bar times the other thing, 
bar. X bar Y. All that to the bar. You see that? It's weird, but it, it's a thing. So uh, let's go, let's go. Uh, that's very fun. So that is that. And OK, we need to now simplify this. I think we have another De Morgan's Law. Do you see that? It's hard to notice, but it's there. It's uh, We have an AND negated. And that'll become an OR. So this first one was De Morgan. We're going to do De Morgan again times uh, x bar. And this is going to be in parentheses. x bar bar, I think. Yeah, so x bar bar. And then y, the left side negated, the right side negated, or them together. So x bar bar plus y bar. Okay, this is weird to think about, I know. So that is, that should be that. And that is again De Morgan. And then we have uh, this, and I think we can get rid of this uh, x bar bar. That's just x. That's not bad. So x bar times uh, just x plus y bar. That's double negation. And it looks like I'm running out of space, so let's uh, let's fix that. I wonder if I can just do this. Yeah, that, that might work. And then we can bring all this over. Yeah, much better. OK, so now, moving on, cool. Uh, I think distribution is probably the way to go. we got to bring this. We can distribute the multiplication, which uses the law that actually makes sense. Okay, distribute that AND over the OR. So this gives us uh, x bar times x plus x bar times y bar. You see that? How it's distributing just like in math? That's the rule that makes sense. So that's uh, just a distributive law. Dist law, we'll say. Okay, so now we're almost there. We're almost home free. This is what we want. We've got to get rid of this. How can we do it? We better get rid of that uh, x times x bar thing. And oh man, it's the wrong way around. I know you know it, but let's just spell it out using the commutative law of and, of multiplication. So this is going to be the same as x times x bar plus x bar times y bar. That's commutative property of multiplication which is our AND, and then this is going to go away because we have this complement law right here that says, okay, anything ANDed with its negation is obviously false. So then we have 0 or x bar y bar, uh, and this is done by the, what was it called, double? No, it's just complement law. Complement law. And then finally, we've got to get rid of the zero. Of course, it's on the wrong side. We're going to use commutativity once more. X bar, Y bar, plus zero. Obviously, if you're doing a proof, I can I understand that you can use commutativity. You don't have to spell it out. Uh, X bar, Y bar, zero. That's commutative again. This time for plus. And then anything plus zero is that thing. We get X times Y. Uh, x bar times y bar, because of which rule, dun dun dun, we just got rid of it through the identity law, right? So that is exactly why this is equal to that. They are equivalent. Okay, so it's everything you know and love already. We're just using the same laws. We're just, I don't know, making it a bit weirder to to look at okay it's just the symbols are different but i want you to get used to them too okay so that's why we're doing it have another okay so how about this one uh give a boolean expression that is a sum of min terms that is equivalent to this function so we kind of did it very similarly over here dun 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 actually yeah it's almost the same one but slightly slightly different so don't draw the circuit this time, just give me the sum of min terms answer. 
And remember that a min term is uh, a product of literals, so it's asking for a sum of products of literals, which is disjunctive normal form. That's what it's asking for. OK, so that is essentially the secret. So uh, assuming you've tried this, let's do it together now. We'll do, uh, we'll find all of the true branches. So it's going to be, uh, this is true whenever x is false and y is false, or, you see that? Or when, you don't really need the parentheses because of the order of operations, but I'm going to give them anyway. Uh, or it's true when x is true and y is true. So these are min terms. This is a sum of them. It's disjunctive normal form. And that's the answer. OK, hopefully that makes sense. You can give in uh, false and false. That'll make true and true. So that side is going to give back true. Uh, and then true ord with anything is true. And then sometimes it'll be false as well, because uh, true and false is still false, ord with uh, false and true, which is still false. That's the idea. So that is uh, that is this. And this is equivalent to, uh, remember, that's your double implication, your biconditional, right? They are equivalent. It's either both 0 or both 1. That's secretly this, right? Uh, but this one isn't in actual logic or in Boolean algebra, but it is in logic. That's what I'm trying to say, OK? So that is that. Is that. Let's try this one now, OK? So another problem for you. So using the laws of Boolean algebra, uh, please convert using the law. Sorry, this should be use. Excuse me. Convert it to DNF. Name each law that you use. And I'm going to just give ourselves some extra space because we're probably going to need it. So we're going to use those laws to convert this expression to DNF. So it's got to be, remember, it's got to be a sum of a bunch of products, OK? Sum of products, that's what DNF is. Sum of products. And we're going to use this table to somehow simplify this into a sum of products. So uh, let's do it. Sum of products of literals. First of all, uh, this negation is too large. We can only negate individual things, like individual x's or individual y's. And it looks like this is also being negated. It's x, y bar, not x bar times y bar. You see that? Uh, so how can we fix all of this? Well, we're going to need to use uh, De Morgan's law twice. There's a big, big difference. Notice, notice this is x times y bar and not x bar times y bar. These are two different things because we can use De Morgan's on this one. OK, so that's the idea. We're going to start with this, x, y bar uh, times x plus y bar. And so we're going to need to use De Morgan's twice. Let's just do that for this one first. That's going to make it, uh, this is x times y, negate the whole thing. It's going to be not x or not y, right? And then multiplied with the same thing, uh, x plus y bar. OK, so that's De Morgan. Gives us that. And then we need to get rid of this negation. It's over too many things. We're going to use De Morgan's once more. This is x plus y bar times. It's going to be uh, not x times not y. Yeah? That should work. And so that's De Morgan. And now we need to get a bunch of pluses on the outside. So I think the best thing to do is to distribute this thing. It's a bunch of multiplications already anyway. OK. So uh, let's do it. Let us do it. So we need to distribute. We technically need to get it over so we can distribute it on this side. That's the idea. So let's use commutativity. Let's, let's do it right. x bar times y bar times x bar plus y bar. And hopefully this is, I'm not making any silly mistakes. I apologize if I am, but you know what I'm trying to at least show you. 
cumulative law for and. Uh, okay, so now we're going to distribute. Distribute that and in, and we can just put it put it next to you, just like if this were normal multiplication. Okay, so we're using the distributive law to get uh, x bar times y bar, all of that times the first one, x bar, and then plus x bar times y bar times the other thing, y bar. And so this is essentially an answer, but it's not very simplified. So let's just simplify it because we have two x bars and two y bars, and those can go away. That's when you're repeating yourself, you can get rid of those extra things. Uh, let's see, where is that? Where is it saying that? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, item potent laws. If you have anything multiplied with itself, it's still itself, which is not normal multiplication anymore still. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of these. Let me let me be all hand wavy. Let's use commutativity to get these all right next to each other. Let's use it twice. Plus x bar. Oh no, we only need it once. The y's are already next to each other. So that's commutativity. Four. And again, I'm swapping this one and this one. Again, if you're doing this on a test or in class, I don't care that you show this one. That's just extra work on your part. I understand that you understand that and is commutative. And now we can get rid of these double things. We're going to use the same law twice, the item potent law, to get x bar times y bar plus x bar times y bar. Oh man, this is actually going to go away again. Uh, dun dun dun. This is item potent law. And it looks like these will actually go away too, but we'll, let's just stop there, okay? Technically, we can go even farther. Dot, dot, dot. Really, the question, with the question, we could have stopped right here. That's a good answer. That's, it's already DNF. It's a, it's a product of sums, yeah? So. Could really stop here, but we want it to be cool and take it even farther. And we notice that we can actually simplify it more. So that is, I think, let's let's see how we're doing. That's more or less where I want to leave you. We're gonna come back on this slide, I think, and uh, we'll we'll pick it up from here in the next lecture. I have I have decided. So I'll see you here uh, in a little bit.